Uh, good morning for everyone who's here, who made it. Um, this is our talk on the OpenSUSE conference about post-quorum token cryptography with OpenSUSE. Um, my name is Dennis Knorr. Um, I'm a security certifica certification engineer, and we are doing this talk together. I'm doing this talk together with Marcus, uh, who is a distinguished engineer for solution security. Um, before we start, short questions of understanding you can ask during the talk. Uh, for longer questions or discussions, please, let's do this after the talk. So, for this talk, we want to, to, uh, we want to tell you a bit about uh, quantum computing and why does it want to hurt our precious cryptography. I mean, we all know cryptography, it's really important for us. Without this, we could not do banking, there would be no trustable systems, and so on. So, before we talk about post-quantum cryptography, we should uh, introduce the topic a little bit. Um, what is quantum computing? Quantum computing is a type of computation which can harness the, uh, the power of the quantum mechanic world. This is the definition by Wikipedia. The thing is, in practice, quantum computers are special devices which can use the entanglement of qubits, uh, of, of quantum states. Um, and this enables us doing things faster or doing things in another way. And the second question is, of course, okay, how powerful are they? Can we reach singularity or what can we do actually with them? And they are powerful and uh, they are not your usual pro general purpose computer. They will be a bit more probably like an FPGA. But still, they are like, in the theoretic sense, they are like a Turing machine with a very powerful oracle in special situations. As I said, they do things very fast, and they can tackle mathematical problems which we had a hard time before quantum computers. And they can do this faster when they are built uh, in the correct way. But as this also enables new mathematical approaches, we have a problem with our hitherto uh, cryptographic algorithms because they rely on certain mathematical assumptions. And with quantum computers, we can attack this. If any one of you did in school um, continuous fractions, this is the core stuff which actually attacks, for example, RSA. And the re uh, result of this, if quantum computers will arrive, our data is at risk and we cannot talk in a trusted way over the internet. You will hear and list, uh, read many articles, you will hear many discussions and read many articles that quantum computers may never come. The thing is, um, for being a real threat, we need quantum computers which have a decent amount of memory. At the moment, we operate, the quantum computers operate at 20 qubit, and you cannot really do anything meaningful with that. But um, the thing is that the general purpose quantum computers do not exist. Like, we have an algorithm, we put this in the general purpose quantum computer, and we can attack things with the right amount of memory. Um, these will probably, at least, you will, you will, uh, you will uh, find no person who will give you a definite answer, but probably these will not exist for quite a few years. But there are special purpose quantum computers which already exist probably. Um, there's a spin-off of Lockheed Martin called D-Wave, and they built a special quantum computer where the where this is already encoded in hardware. So, and these, in theory, they could already attack crypto because they had 2,000 qubits. But these are very, very, very special, and we actually do have not seen it in public working. Still, they apparently sell, us, sell this to government institutions. We do not know. Now, okay, we could uh, say, so, who's working on this, perhaps we just uh, terminate all the people 
um, who work on this, and then we will never have quantum computers. This is quite unlikely because um, there are research groups in universities. The government is working on this. And um, in the last year, um, NSA and NIST released a joint paper where they gave a timeline when they want to have all the uh, cryptographic algorithm migrated to post-quantum safe versions. Um, short thing, there are two different um, expressions for this. You have either quantum safe algorithms or post-quantum cryptography, but they basically mean, mean the same thing. When quantum computers are there, our algorithms and our cryptography is still uh, secure. And Cryptography is also not the only thing where quantum computers are good at. They are good for meteorology and chemistry, where you have large data sets and fuzzy computation. Perhaps also AI, that's not entirely sure for now. But because they are, for, especially for big companies like pharmacy companies, these are interesting. And they will put money into that because then they can research faster and better. So quantum computers will be reality at some point. An additional threat here is we know that, um, uh, that uh, big organizations from governments save internet traffic and save important data for them where they save encrypted material and wait until they can decrypt it. This is the harvest now, decrypt later uh, strategy. And um, when the quantum computing era arrives, all stuff is instantly decryptable or replaceable. Or they could recover the, our key and then sign stuff with our key and you could not uh, differentiate who is the real person there. So, Every secret exchange via asymmetric algorithms is compromised, even years later. We have uh, some assumptions and some speculations. This will be between three to seven years, depending how paranoid the person is you're talking with. Um, but at least two to three years you can think of, because um, you do not have to save all the traffic. You do only have to uh, um, save the important parts of the traffic. And because of traffic analysis, the big uh, government institutions can do that. And when you have old systems, you cannot, when the era is there, you cannot update them online because other people can get into the data stream and forge this. Yeah, so what's affected actually? We have, every one of you knows probably RSA. Does anyone? Okay, everyone knows RSA. Diffie Hellman. Um, oh, I forgot the E by Diffie. I'm very sorry, Mr. Diffie. Um, is uh, um, uh, not the same uh, mathematical issue, but still it works on finite fields. And elliptic curve cryptography will become obsolete. The funny thing here is that elliptic curve becomes even faster, probably obsolete, because it has less bits, and can also, uh, because of this, they can fit into a smaller quantum computer. Um, the next thing, um, and this is the part where, uh, where the uh, continuous fraction attack will mostly come in, because everything you can do uh, with, with finite fields, you can attack with this fraction attack and decrypt the stuff. There's also another attack, Schor's algorithm, and Schor's algorithm enables brute forcing to be faster by order, let's say, half. It halves uh, a space of keys, more or less. So we will have to update everything which uses crypto. Not only the stuff where you encrypt your Okay, the, the disk encryption is another thing. This is only when, when your key lengths are length, uh, good enough and your, uh, your hashing is long enough, that's not a problem. But basically, everything with communication, TLS, certificates, OpenSSH, has to be updated. Uh, and especially with TLS, we have a problem because the cipher suites have to be encoded in the standard so everyone accepts them. Yeah. Do we panic? Do we just say, okay, 
we just wait that ever, no one uh, that everyone does other things the the things for us or will we actually say what could we do and the post quantum cryptography algorithms are actually already researched for quite a while um, the for example lattices which is a mathematical ma uh, method new algorithms rely on I had them in, in university, which is now over 15 years ago. Still, when you compare it to RSA, until we had a real good hang of RSA, this took 20 to 30 years. And RSA was much easier than lattices. Um, still, there are already algorithms. There are um, also implementations, which we will uh, uh, later tell you. But this is still a uh, uh, work in progress because not only you have to look at the algorithms itself if they are sound, but also if they have new side channels attack, for example. And the real, the, the real, the even more important thing is, I told you about TLS. T changing standards will take time because people are accustomed to the standards. They may be skeptical. They will say, "Why do we actually need this?" Oh, we have to roll out new software. That's not a good thing. So, what are the countermeasures? I give Markus. <laughs> okay. Yeah, of course. Um, as um, Dennis mentioned, we will not need new uh, algorithms that are not brute forceable or not be made to be very quickly uh, reverse engineered using quantum computers. So. People have been started to look at these kind of hard problems that are not in the same area like um, factorization or multiplication that uh, RSA and others rely on. Um, and so would not be directly affected by quantum computers. Um, <clears throat> they still can, of course, be broken with enough compute power, but not specifically faster than with quantum computers. So there's there was the need for uh, lots of mathematical research. Um, and as Dennis said, like for instance, this lattice um, computations, these are in the research for quite a long time already. Um, they have not been able to speed up, which is a good sign, um, which means that they might resist quantum computing efforts. Um, if you are familiar with um, the Terrain NP hard um, problems, so these kind of things uh, we are looking for. Um, there are multiple of those, um, and of course the whole standardization body f knows that um, some of them might be broken, uh, so they are looking for uh, variants, multiple variants of, um, not variants, but multiple kinds of algorithms that they can uh, use. A lot of stuff is work in progress, uh, so a lot of stuff is getting reviewed, refined, um, and we've been observing the NIST uh, efforts in the last uh, one or two years a bit more closely, and they um, increased algorithm sizes, uh, they did small adjustments um, to the algorithms, so they're still refining those algorithms at, uh, at this time. <clears throat> so we, the, the NIST, the National Institute for Standardization uh, at the, in the United States, uh, um, is doing the quantum competition since yeah, since 2016, they started with like over 30 candidates, um, discarded a lot of them that were easy to break or not workable, um, and have some final contenders lined up. Actually, they have not been uh, issued a single standard yet. We are expecting this for quite a while already, but um, they have not um, specified a standard of those yet. Um, they also actually asked for more, um, like for signature, I think they asked for some more uh, submissions because there was only one or two and they don't want to risk that uh, these could be broken by people and then we were standing there without any kind of signature algorithm. And this is the main blocker. So if there is no standardization, then people shy away from implementing this directly into software. Still, we need to start doing that. Um, to, we need to uh, enhance our software to be able to adapt or integrate those quickly. <coughs> also, what's important, the, new, the problem that I have with the new algorithms, they are all bigger or slower 
and have bigger key sizes and stuff like that. So we do not have the one size fits all as we had with ECC. We have now to see, okay, we can use this for that application and this for that application, but we have to have, we will have drawbacks in security perhaps. Yeah, for instance, one of the standards uh, for key exchange requires by RSA or uh, Diffie-Hellman or elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman has a two-step approach of key exchange. One of the ones proposed has a three-step approach with an intermediate, which of course is uh, likely difficult to integ uh, integrate into the current uh, state engines of the TLS engine or uh, the IPsec engines and so on. So that, that requires not just plugging in a different algorithm, but also changing partially how the key exchange works. So that and that is, of course, then more challenging than just throwing in a new algorithm. So um, we are paying attention to the updates of standards. Um, if you are working on cryptographic algorithms, uh, I would recommend also to keep an eye on that um, when it starts coming in. Yeah. <coughs> so um, Dennis mentioned that already. The NSA and the NIST, they went forward and um, put out a joint paper, which algorithms have to be changed on what timelines. Um, with their mind, of course, focusing on very secure, so uh, na uh, secret agency level secure, but with a very ambitious timeline. So currently, as we are starting now, we will, might not support everything as, as the beginning. We will transition to these kind of algorithms over time, of course. But of course, we also need to wait for the open source implementation uh, to come. But before open source implementation come, the standardization needs to be finished. So what did they propose? Yeah, software and firmware signing should start transitioning immediately without having a standard available. This is a bit challenging. Um, so, but yeah, let's see what we are doing. And really, they should start supporting these new signing algorithms by 2025. So you see here CNSA 2.0. This is a, the cryptographic standard that they proposed. It's the second edition. There's the first edition of um, which without uh, post-quantum ciphers. And the CNA is CNSA 2.0 uh, um, basically mandates these kind of yeah, uh, firmware signing, software signing transitions. Yeah. Um, and it also mentions that all the things should have transitioned by end of uh, 2030, um, which, if you know how slow software and standardization works, is definitely a challenge. Yeah, some more details. Start transitioning now for a lot of pieces. Um, still challenge without a final standard um, on the low-level crypto primitives and also uh, missing standardization on the uh, ciphers, protocols like TLS, like Ike, and so on. It's challenging to really start transitioning now, um, but we definitely need to be mindful. We announced very long life cycles for SLES 15, for instance, um, and as you know, even as quick or semi-quick working uh, distributions, they, we, we can only react, we react slower, yeah? and uh, we need to maintain stuff for a longer lifetime. So it's, uh, it's for us a bigger challenge. So operating system support by 2027. Not sure what if everything that encompasses, but kernel. That's kernel. basically TLS. when you have kernel oh. and TLS in the kernel, SHA, stuff mm. like that. Yeah. So and especially with a lot of the world being IoT these days and even more, with let's say limited update capability, that will be a be a bit of challenge to transition. I mean, most of that will have a limited shelf life or limited work life, but um, yeah, for the long-running system, that is definitely a, a problem. Legacy, the question is really what is legacy? Um, legacy um, is in that case when you have um, algorithms which are also a niche and very old and you did not migrate to modern stuff or you have special databases like SAP and they used some kind of cryptography in there. Uh, so they can use more time. Yeah, so we need to start now. Um, and some migrations have started already, even though there is yeah, nothing really final standard. Uh, the good thing is that the stuff seems to stabilize. And we are 
really expecting that the NIST will finalize some of those standards in this year. Or next year. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Um, there's also a thing, not sure if you have this on the next slide, is that um, they also recommend going to longer SHA algorithms. So actually the, the hashing itself is not directly impacted by uh, the quantum computing. However, due to increased um, brute forcing efforts, it is recommended that you switch to um, SHA-512 um, for various for various purposes because SHA-256 might be easier brute forceable with quantum computers. Um, and actually, transitioning for the existing algorithms is something that we have been doing already. So we have been signing our repository, uh, hashing the hashes of our repositories are SHA-512. Um, we also switch to longer RSA key lengths to avoid um, that perhaps shorter RSA keys can be um, um, factorized quickly. So this is something that we are um, having uh, working on already. And of course, the whole transition brings the challenge that we need to operate with um, some kind of, one, on one hand, non post quantum cipher like traditional cipher and uh, post quantum cipher together. Yeah, and so combine combinations to ensure that um, yeah, we, we are safe against post-quantum attacks, but um, potentially also still can use um, the, the current algorithms, um, especially if one of the newer algorithms then still turns out to be compromised in some form or reverse, reverse engineerable. Then it would be good to have this kind of dual um, I guess the word I forgot it, but... Um, it's really called hybrid encryption. Hybrid, yeah. yeah. which might be a bit confusing for many because you might have learned hybrid encryption as you use your public key to encrypt a, pass, uh, a credential with, with which you encrypt data in a symmetric array. But with the, in the post-quantum setting, you mean hybrid like you use both because we still not know if we can trust the post-quantum algorithms, so we additionally split up the symmetric secret into pair parts and encrypt us both of them, so you have to break both algorithms to get your data decrypted. Yeah. This is the that is a bit a question. No one wants to implement this apparently in the last years because it's very complex, but um, the thing is that uh, we actually do not know if someone comes around. Uh, last year and the year before, quite a number of algorithms in the NIST competition were broken. Like, there was one summer, every new month a new attack came out, uh, which basically destroyed half of the field of the isogeny curves, which are a special kind of elliptic curves, so to say. Um, and this made everyone very, very cautious, saying, can we trust this? Yeah, of course, the challenge of hybrid encryption is that makes the um, checking verification a bit more complex, um, and complexity brings perhaps new security issues if you're not doing it right. So it's a bit challenging. Yeah, yeah again, what, what stuff we need to look at. Yeah. So first look at software and firmware signing. So this, for us, it's repository signing and verification, like they're also going into a secure boot. Um, for instance, uh, the UEFI consortium is, um, has put out a draft paper or even decided on it, having uh, post-quantum signing uh, for secure boot. VPN software, X509 certificates, TLS, uh, HPS software, that is probably the largest bulk um, in our uh, distribution. Email encryption, GPG needs to, of course, get kind of support for this uh, if you are still using GPG. The whole multi-factor authentication is also based on uh, this kind of asymmetric authentication in the background. Even though it outputs like a six-digit number or something, there is traditional encryption uh, behind, the, behind the scene, which also needs to be updated. Um, of course, we can leave some stuff behind that doesn't use strong crypto or doesn't need strong crypto. Still, as we left behind some software that uses MD5 for file uniqueness checking or so. Um, we finally have to say goodbye to SHA-1 um, because it's definitely too short um, and can easily be, uh, well, surely can be easily reverted. Uh, and due to the potential sizes and brute forcing capabilities of quantum computers, key lengths below 256-bit 
we also need to say goodbye to. So what do we have currently? Yeah, there is several reference implementation uh, already growing. Um, so what we have, for instance, is um, one of the primary or main focus is the libOQS, Open Quantum Safe Org library. Um, it collects reference implementations of all the relevant algorithms. We package this up for factory and also for slash 15 SP6 and leap 15.6. Uh, and also, of course, the micro 6. Um, it's in a package lib OQS. And it includes um, so-called uh, OQS provider for OpenSL3. Uh, this is one of the reasons we also switched 15.6 and 15 SP6 to um, use OpenSSL3 as a base cryptographic OpenSSL library so that we can, or that applications can be rebased or can use um, post quantum cryptography provided by this provider. Um, also prominent is the LPQ crypto library. Not sure if we submitted that to Factory, but it's in the OBS project. Um, and XMSS library was a bit harder to build. I still have it only in my home project currently. I like this because this is basically stateful signing, which would also be good for repositories, which we will not uh, use, but still I think it has nice applications, so I put it in there. Yeah, stateful signing, like keep wrapping your head around it is also a bit about all this new stuff will also be challenging, like this three-step key exchange, stateful signing, there will be new stuff to learn, yeah? so definitely also for packagers. The Bounceville Castle um, is a Java cryptographic provider um, that already has in the current released versions various uh, post-quantum algorithms implemented, uh, and we're shipping that already. Uh, LibGcrypt, there's a lot of uh, submissions going on for LibGcrypt, including uh, post-quantum cryptography. Uh, we have OpenSSH has um, uh, one key exchange algorithm based on Entru, um, yeah. Entru something that is yeah, a post-quantum uh, exchange algorithm, but is only available in the, yeah, in the current 9.3 or later versions. So it's uh, for us also slash 15 SP6 or 15.6 or, or newer. Yeah, uh, as mentioned, we shipped this. Um, one of parts of the software in our current OpenSUSE and SLES versions. We switch to the OpenSSL free library, um, likely causing some challenges for third-party software. Um, hopefully, we can uh, adjust all these uh, problems. Um, OpenSSH I mentioned, and we also yeah, took care in the last year to switch the key sizes uh, of signing. Um, to switch to a 4K uh, RSA key to make proof forcing um, less problematic. So the signing key of OpenSUSE was switched uh, last year. OpenSUSE Leap 15.6 was also switched last year, but Slash 15 SP6 um, and Slash 15, uh, so Slash 15 SP6 only switched with the 15 SP6 version now. And mentioned libgcrypt, I mentioned already the kernel will also need to get uh, post quantum crypto. Not sure if anyone was submitted yet and other libraries that you can think of uh, will also need to be uh, enhanced using post-quantum crypto. As mentioned, all the traditional algorithms um, need to be implemented, yeah, at least SHA-256 or even SHA-512, uh, perhaps better. Um, update to RSA, um, even in the current BSI requirement is already 3,000 plus, um, but definitely go to the something like 4,096 bits. And if you are uh, still using DH Diffie-Hellman, then at least also 3K bits uh, for Diffie-Hellman. Yeah, it just buys a bit more time. Um, if someone invents how to build quant larger quantum computers in a uh, yeah, good fashion, then we will still be having a problem here, but um, it buys us definitely time. <coughs> yeah, so with that, a bit of shout out to you, to the community, is that we, if you are looking at cryptography, uh, cryptographic implementations, um, look into uh, implement uh, that you integrate these implementations, um, that you update your software uh, if nothing new, uh, if something new comes up from upstream, and of course, um, yeah, mention one uh, community member that he used still in RSA key that. Uh, 
most likely only 1K or 2K long. Uh, so please update also your SSH public keys to be 4K or elliptic curve. Um, don't use that 1024-bit uh, key anymore. Um, yeah, and perhaps also help us spread the word that this is coming. Yeah, this is, will be complicated. There will be transition problems, but it's us um, engineers, software developers that will fix those. Um, we will need to fix those problems. Yeah. Um, there's yeah, expertise. We have expertise in the house. Um, so for Suse, Dennis and myself are the primary expertise holders currently, but we holding this training or this talks, we held this internally uh, half a year ago. Um, some of you might be there. So we are distributing the knowledge around uh, the team, um, the teams, and hope that helps um, people to understand it better. If you are interested, I can give you material. There are exercises how to start implementing such stuff. More help would be very good. With that, um, we are quite finished, and we would open for questions, but I would um, have someone hand the mic to the person who wants to speak. Please wait for the mic, please, and, um, yeah. Also, as we have a bit of time, feel free to ask more questions. I think perhaps we, we missed something in the slides. Test, test. Good. Uh, just one observation. I already noticed that source opens is org. The new, you know, if we will be using Git workflow for, for submissions and stuff, it already requires 4K key for SSH. So that's good. That, that you know, made me upgrade. <laughs> so Very good. That others will follow. Yeah, for Git specifically, um, the thing is that Git originally was designed with SHA-1 as, uh, as a hash. And we are trying to have this in our new products, um, in our own hosted Git instance, to be a SHA-256. But of course, that needs to have the whole Git repo be reinitialized and repopulated, or starting from that point. So that was one where algorithmic... Uh, how is it called? Uh, my mind is not good. <laughs> this kind of, that you can switch algorithms on the fly uh, would be definitely have been more useful. Uh, agility, cryptographic agility would have been more in the interesting there. But next question. Um, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, but uh, there's still one basic thing and I don't understand. Uh, from my understanding, everything which can be computed in polynomial time uh, can be reversed and on an NP mesh machine, which I think quantum computers should res resemble in polynomial time. So, uh, aren't those post-quantum algorithms like insanely slow on normal computers? They are slower mostly, or sometimes they are not slower, but they have bigger key sizes. It depends. The thing is, as the new so first of all, we, we try to rely on hard mathematical problems and mix some, some obfuscation within. Uh, the uh, uh, cryptographers always say because it's math plus, plus mud. And, but the new uh, algorithms which we base on these problems, they are slower, yes. They are not, we still uh, want a trapdoor-like way, like fast in one way and even more slow in the other way. And for the new algorithms, we say, okay, when uh, we, for example, for lattices, there are concrete attack algorithms, the L3 algorithm, for example, and they c could break the algorithm. So everything will be tried to be reduced to L3. And when you can say, okay, within this uh, setting, this takes even so much time, then, it's, uh, then this will mean that uh, it's very slow. But yes, the, the usage will be slower most of the times, sadly. Yeah, so this is one of the mentioned drawbacks, that the algorithms are not just a bit, occasionally a bit more complex to implement, um, but they also need more space or more traffic on the internet. And one of the algorithms actually requires floating point arithmetic, which is kind of super weird, but um, okay. So there will be various of those challenges, like sizes, um, speed, yeah. Kind of unavoidable. 
Um, you've mentioned that um, some of the projects already updated, uh, so OpenSSL and some other ones. But uh, what about uh, GPG? Is there any work done there, or is it just waiting? Yeah, so GPG loses the Gcrypt in the back end. Um, that's one thing. The challenge, as I mentioned, is that um, at first you need to have the low-level cryptographic algorithms. And then on top are these standard, the standards that use them. And most of the standardization bodies don't want to go ahead with standardizing something until the low-level cryptographic algorithms are finished yeah, or are standardized. So we're kind of in this kind of cat and mouse game where we are waiting for people to finish their work before other layers can start. Yeah. So before the GPG protocol or the GPG packet protocol can implement something, they would wait for an algorithm to be standardized. And then for GPG, we face the challenge uh, of two competing projects that uh, talk about the OpenGPG standard currently, which doesn't help. Um, so, yeah, but it will come. So that definitely will come. Any more questions? One question from distribution point of view. We do security audit requests, right? Like with every new release. Maybe we should do them with beta, not so late. This time we did it with, I think, RC. But uh, are you checking if there is any software, like in some checks, that would be using unsafe cryptography? Like, is it part of this security audit, or is it like separate effort? Thank you. Yeah, so uh, the question was like, if our product security audits include insecure cryptographic algorithms or ciphers or key lengths. Um, so the, our product security audit currently doesn't really do that. Um, however, um, Dennis and myself um, work, for instance, on the FIPS project, where we in turn work with our QE people to have a, um, let's say, good testing coverage of the whole distribution. Um, under FIPS, uh, FIPS mode, and for FIPS we can then have those restrictions switched on. And there we are looking actively for cryptographic packages that don't meet um, the requirements or don't use standard libraries and work on top of that. But it's definitely also something that we will put more effort in, that we identify these problems, that we look for, I mean, the same way we look for MD5 usage and slowly put it out of distributions the same way we are looking at Sharp one and pushed it out of the distribution. Um, yeah, for Sharp one we actually had to look at that, and uh, funny thing, the kernel still has two, three places relying on Sharp one that are actually re even cryptographic relevant. So they um, need to adjust the code and change it. Yeah? And um, adapt, yeah, disallow these kind of algorithms and so on. Yeah. Um. So there is a project which I started last year with a Google Sum of Code project. I sadly had no time working on it, but if anyone is interested, this project is meant as a command line and as a library where you could like ask, ask the software, not in the AI way, but more in the, uh, I put in the key length and the algorithm and it tells me is this okay from certain standards. So if you're interested, ask, come after the talk to me and I can tell you that. But this is still an ongoing work. Yeah. No more questions? Then, thank you for listening. And have a nice rest of uh, the conference. <laughs>